We welcome all listeners to our service this morning. We trust that it it will be a blessing to you, even as you share. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand before him. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Together. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the glory, with the glory of God the Father, Amen. The Lord be with you. Our colleague for today, 
proper eight is to be found on page 174. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading comes from the second book of Samuel, chapter 1. A reading from the Word of God, written in the second chapter of Samuel, beginning at verse 1 and continuing at verse 17, ending at verse 27. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from defeating the Amalekites, David remained two days in Ziglag. David intoned his lamentation over Saul and his son Jonathan. He ordered that the song of the bow be taught to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Jesha. He said, Your glory, O Israel, lies slain upon your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath. Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the Philistines will rejoice. The daughters of the uncircumcised will exult. You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor bounteous fields. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul anointed with oil no more. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death, they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul who clothed you with crimson, in luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan lies slain upon your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perished. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 130. The psalm for today is Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to know what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning. More than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now, and shall be forever. Amen. 
the New Testament lesson comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. The second lesson is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 to 15. As you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to, one, to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance, as it is written. The one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual hymn, number 312, from the CPWI.
reading of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to Christ the Mark chapter 5 verses 21 to 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came and, when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she had been healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your fate has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they, had, when they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were, who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her hand, he took her by the hand and said to her, Talita kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of Christ, praise to Christ our Lord. Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. As thou didst break the loaves beside the sea. Be with us, gracious Lord, in the breaking of your word, and grant that as it is passed on to those who are hearing, your will may be done in them and through them for the praise and glory of your name. Amen. Computer technology, inclusive of touch phones, is challenging for adults who are daring enough to acquire them and then have the necessary skills and humble enough to learn from children and young people who I refer to as the default gurus of the associated disciplines. I will share with you what I learned from the young 
so that you can better appreciate the contents of this message. The default drive of the computer is the warehouse in which information is stored. Lost files may be retrieved from that drive. The default concept, however, is not new to the word of God. Default holiness and default uncleanness have, been, have their legal implications and they have implications for our eternal salvation. Default uncleanness can be seen in the story of the Good Samaritan which our Lord Jesus Christ told. Because the priest and the Levite who saw the man lying at the side of the road concluded that he was dead and that if they touched him they would have become unclean and as a result would therefore have been able to perform their duties for the entire day. Default holiness can be seen even in the very ways in which things were done by our Lord Jesus Christ. He touched the lepers. He made them clean. They did not make him unclean. I want to look this morning at the healing of the woman who had the issue of blood for some 12 years. But first, let me tell you of one of the strategies of Mark as he wrote the gospel. He had the habit of sandwiching important stories between another story. So in this morning's reading, what you would have heard is the beginning of the story of the healing of Jairus' daughter and then the important story of the woman between that followed by that, and underneath was the completion of the story of the healing of Jairus' daughter. Mark, therefore, wanted us to pay strict attention to what it was that he was saying. Let us begin by examining the thoughts of the woman. She is one who seemed to have been well versed in the Old Testament scriptures. But more than anything else, she was sure to acquaint herself with the passages that dealt with her situation. For example, in Exodus chapter 29 and verse 70, 37, we read, For seven days make atonement for the altar and consecrate it. These were instructions that were being given to Moses for the consecration of the altar. Listen carefully. Then the altar will be most holy, and whatever touches it will be holy. The woman considered Jesus to have been most holy. And that what applied to the altar of God would also apply to our Lord Jesus Christ. Hence her thought, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. So she did it, and she was made well. But that's not the end of the story. Jesus' reaction revealed that the woman knew the purpose of her touch. You think about the number of people pressing on him, as the various gospel writers indicated, and they asked Jesus, but how could you tell how somebody who touched you? Jesus knew. Because the woman's intention was different from what all others around had had. If I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. I want you to notice the implications that flow from this revelation about the touch which the woman made and from what our Lord Jesus Christ had been practicing without or probably not paying attention to what he was doing. You might have observed that when it came to lepers, the lepers made the prayer, touch us, Lord, heal us. 
What did Jesus do? I will be thou made clean. Jesus touched the lepers and they were made clean. This affirmation is something which we must bear in mind as we consider the implication of the gospel message for today. And it is this. Jesus came from God. He sanctified human flesh by his having been born of Mary the woman. Notice well that since he sanctified human flesh, then all persons who are human have the privilege and the opportunity of becoming holy. But they would have to do one thing. There would have had to be the touch of our Lord Jesus Christ. They are touching him so that they could fully partake of the holiness that he came to impart. Those of you who make use of the Angelus prayer, whether it be privately or at the start of a service, might remember the phrase, Blessed Mary, Holy Mary, Mother of God, Ever Virgin. All those little phrases are saying something. And this is because the body of Mary was made holy by the touch of our Lord Jesus Christ since he entered her body and became his son. The story of the healing of the woman seemed to have made its rounds in the early church. Because what do we have following? We hear of the disciples, and particularly Peter, who, after the handkerchief touched his body, persons would take these handkerchiefs to their home so that the sick would have been made well. And this is recorded in Acts chapter 5, verse 15, and also in Acts chapter 19, verse 11 following, when persons took handkerchief to Paul so that he could touch them, or even the shadow of these apostles would fall upon them, that would have been enough for the healing touch. I want to bring to your attention something that you might not have given thought to. And it is this, that because of that touch of our Lord Jesus Christ, our holiness is there and we must make use of it. In actual fact, Paul grasped upon it and shared some deep, deep thoughts with us. There is one that is in the reading for today. He said, brethren, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who... Though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, so that we through his poverty might become rich. In 1928, the English church, the Church of England, put out a revised form of the prayer book. It did not make it because it was not passed by the House of Commons. In that prayer book, they had room for a Sunday after Christmas day. And the lesson for that Sunday is a one verse lesson. This portion which I just read. Brethren, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who even though he was rich, yet for our sake he became poor. Those of you who might have the revision, the revised prayer book, you can check it and you will see it written there and they would probably just show a mark at the end or at the side to indicate that this was part of the revision that was given out. I want to make a plea for you to take in mind a few things. They may not be emphasized in our church as doctrine but I want to say to you that the possibility of these things are so strong that if you want to hold it then you are free to hold it you realize it is possible that the God who entered the body of Mary could also have decided to take her up into his fear into heaven without her having passed through the gate of death 
give it some serious thought, you will better be able to appreciate many of the things that are said. For us, Paul picked up on this sense of holiness and he reminded the Corinthians in Corinthians chapter, the first chapter and the first book and the chapter 6, he reminded them that their bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit and that they must therefore glorify him in their bodies. Where does this holiness come for us? How, what part does it play for us here in our present day and age? In most dioceses, you will hear of the bishop blessing oils on the Thursday before Good Friday. That's on Holy Thursday. Why does he bless the oils? These oils are to go forth to the various parts of each diocese so that the priest may apply them to persons who are sick and by so doing you pray for them so that they will be made whole notice it is oil that is coming from the bishop the chief shepherd of God's flock in the diocese and that this is passed on to others so that persons can be made well Implications for us are that we must begin to take our lives seriously and to live in ways that are pleasing to God because since he has given us the new opportunity to live again by becoming his adopted children, whether it be sons or daughters, it is for us to make use of it and to live in accordance with his will. May you continue to touch the Lord in your daily prayers, your morning prayers, your evening prayers. I can say to you, if you touch him, he will make you whole. Because in your converse with him, it is you who are learning from him and it is he who continues to fill you on a daily basis. May God bless you richly Amen. Today we pray for the family of Miss Esther Imelda Waldron, who departed this life on the 7th of June at the age of 105. And we pray as a family, they continue to celebrate a life, work and witness, and give God thanks for the love and prayers they have received. And in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Pakistan United. We pray for all the school children who are to go out to sit the exams next week. We pray for the teachers who will supervise these children. Continue to pray for our nation at this time, our leaders, Her Excellency the President, Paula May Weeks, the Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Keith, Christopher Rowley, the Chief Justice, Ivor Archie, and all other ministers. We use intercessions form D on page 111. O Heavenly Father has promised through our Lord Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. Let us therefore pray for the church and the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. We pray for the church of God in every place, especially for this diocese. Our Bishop Claude, retired Bishops Clive, Rawl, and Calvin, and all the people of God. Strengthen the church to carry forward the work of Christ. We pray for our country and for all nations of the world and for all peoples in their various callings. Directing this nation and all nations in the ways of justice and truth. 
We pray for our own community, for this parish, for our families, friends, and all who live and work with us. Give you grace to all our friends and neighbors in Christ, that we may serve him in one another and grow together in his love. We pray for the poor, the sick, the unemployed, the handicapped, and all who have requested our prayers and all who seek the prayers of the church in their time of trouble. Give healing and strength to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, give them courage and hope in their troubles, and sustain all those who remember and care for them. We commemorate the departed, especially Miss Esther Imelda Waldron, and all our brothers and sisters in Christ that have passed on. We commend all people to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled, fulfilled and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Accept these prayers, O Lord, our God, for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not enough. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Using for thee, let us therefore confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are the body of Christ. By the one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, and have all been made to drink of the one Spirit. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace and build up the common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. The offertory hymn from the CPWI is number 351. Thy hand, O Lord, has guided.
wine, this money. With them we offer ourselves, our lives and our work to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice as this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ so may we and all your people become channels of your love through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. Because in this most holy and glorious day, a triple light was given. On the first day of creation, you brought light and life into being. On the first day for our salvation, you raised your son victorious over death. And on this day, you gave your holy and life-giving spirit to your church. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory and in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Using Eucharistic Prayer D to be found on page 140. All glory, praise, and thanksgiving be unto you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. You created the world and all mankind, and of your tender mercy gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there, by his own oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted, and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you, and be pleased to accept, bless, and sanctify these gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Son and Holy Spirit, we praise your precious name. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this 
for the remembrance of me. In faith, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Now therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, your servants, with all your holy people, having in remembrance the blessed passion, mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension of your beloved Son, do offer unto your divine majesty this bread of eternal life and this cup of everlasting salvation, rendering thanks to you for the wonderful redemption which you have made possible for us in him. And we beseech you, O Father, to accept upon your heavenly altar this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all your whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, all who shall be partakers of this Holy Communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction and be numbered in the glorious company of your saints. I invite you to join in the rest of the prayer. And here we offer and present unto you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice. And although we are unworthy to offer unto you any sacrifice, yet we beseech you to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits or pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, we offer unto you, Father Almighty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. My brothers and sisters in Christ, draw near and receive his body which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you and feed on him in your heart, in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Grant us, gracious Lord, that we may so eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and drink his blood that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us amen hymns for the communion heaven came down
fit with life from above into God's family divine. Justified fully through Calvary's blood. Oh, what a standing is mine! And the transaction so quickly was made when as a sinner I came to come. Set me your praises there near. Oh, heaven came down and the glory filled my soul. Filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole. Made me whole. My sins were washed away. Turned to day. Oh, heaven came down and the glory filled my soul. No other hope that will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure. Of life, and it's because of his wonderful day when at the cross I believe, which is eternal and blessing supernal from his precious hand I receive. Oh, heaven came down and the glory filled my soul. Bottom of page 147, all together, Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share in his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We upon whom your spirit shines give light to the world. Help us to continue in faithful witness to your word so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God go before us to clear the way of all danger. May God be behind us to protect us from oncoming harm. May God be above us to uphold us, beneath us to support us, around us to enfold us, within us to inspire us and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. The recessional hymn number 618 from the CPWI.
just to express our thanks to all those persons who participated in the worship for today and our very special thanks who do, to those who con contributed special items. May God bless you all and may your week be filled with his grace and with success in all that you do. Amen. The doxology. Let us all join in singing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above angelic host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.